MMAweekly.com, Damon Martin here once again with my good friend Pat Barry. Pat, before we talk about anything else, I like the hair, man. What's up? You got some, some slick back hair there. Hey, Brian, I haven't had hair since high school, man. And trust me, I'm, I'm, it's, it's coming back. I'm, I'm growing my Guida Henderson. I'm growing my Brenneman right now. It's coming. Just give me like... A few more months, man, is going to be glorious. Was that you or the lady? Be honest. Hey, it's me, man. Yeah? Come yeah? It's me. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Now, before we talk about the fight, you, you busted out some karaoke recently. You sent me a video. You got some uh, some Crow Cop in the car. Is this an another career for you? A little yeah, American man. Idol something, yeah, maybe? You know what? You got to always have a backup plan. And if that's going to work, then that's going to work. I, and I was thinking, instead of me just going around singing, Maybe me going around getting these badass dudes to do just ridiculous, silly stuff and catching it on candy cameras. That'd be dope. That'd I like the dope. choices that you got. Get, I mean, imagine that. What if I can get Kane Velasquez to start tap dancing? What? I'm a genius. That's that's a zillion dollar idea. You and I, we're going to us together. I like that. I, I like the choice of songs. Though. You got the Mamas and the Papas. You got Neil Young, dude. That was that was classic yeah, stuff man, right it's, there. It's, it's coming. I mean, this dude had a wide selection of uh, of music, man. A lot of things to take. I think you could do the karaoke superstars of MMA. Maybe that's the, all right. You know? Could Don't you imagine mind. that? I mean, imagine imagine Czech Congo singing uh, Mamas and Papas. Come right. on now. I mean, that's yes. With me in the background like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I wouldn't worry. That'd be a, that'd tell you, it's a million dollar idea. You got it right there. All right. You, if you get it, I want the credit. Something, right, you, piece of the pie, 10%, 20%, something. Okay. You okay. can do it. <laughs> uh, Pat, fight this weekend with Christian Warcraft. You've been working up in Minnesota now for a couple camps now. You've worked with guys like Duke Rufus in the past, other trainers. What is it that, that you like so much about the guys in Minnesota? I'm the smallest guy in the room. For the first time in years, I'm the, absolutely the smallest guy in the room. These dudes... Everybody knows it. It's not a secret. Wrestling and jujitsu and strength and whatnot is my weakness when it comes to fighting. Punching and kicking can always get better, but it's the wrestling and the grappling and whatnot that is that's that's my that's my Achilles heel, uh, if you like to call it that. Uh, so this is a gym that's filled with gigantic wrestlers who all grapple. Caprito is the jujitsu coach. They're all stronger than I am. They're all taller than I am, which is everyone I fight. They're all around. I'm the smallest guy in the room. This is this is what I need to be surrounded by. How much do you think that you've gained working with those guys wrestling and jujitsu wise? Like, where do you feel like you stack up right now? A tremendous amount. The world doesn't know it, but a, tr a tremendous amount of growth in my wrestling, in my jujitsu, in my poise while being on my back or on the mat. Strength, just all around confidence. Tremendous amount. Only problem is, is that with all that growth and with all that gain, you've got to actually do it live, which I've only had a few fights, so I've only done live wrestling and grappling a few times. You can you can mimic it at practice all you want, but until you actually get in there and start doing it live, like that's where that's where the real experience comes from. Do, do you feel like you're starting to come into your own? And what I mean by that is, people kind of forget that you're still young in your MMA career. I mean, you kind of I'm learn say, trial say by fire. Again, say it again. Start it over. Say it one more time. Yeah, you pretty much young in your career. I mean, you you grew up in the UFC literally. Would you come here with like three fights, four fights? Three. So I mean, three fights, a total of like three minutes. Okay. So when you look at where you were day one to now. Are you still, I mean, do you feel like you're still kind of a, you know, a, a, a learning project, I guess the best yeah, way to say it. Yeah, you're not, you're not there yet, I guess I've I should had, say, in your own mind, in your own mind. I've had 10 MMA fights. 10. I've had three fights in Green Bay, and now all of a sudden I'm in the UFC, and three of those, three of the seven UFC fights were the main event, the co-main event, and the co-main event, versus guys who've been doing this a lot longer than I have, versus guys who've gotten more experience than I do, versus guys who all around have done this. Now, have I had a lot of kickboxing experience? Yes, but when it comes down to MMA, that changes everything. And, I, you know, you hear that all the time. But you know what? It's my fault for being in the UFC, apparently. Oh, man, I can't believe you uh, got out of three submissions in a row from Seven Struve and just got caught by the fourth one. You suck. James Tony must be your jiu-jitsu coach. Right. That, instead of what the world already expects, as soon as you grab Pat, he's going to tap because that's how garbage his ground game is. You can just take him down at will. I've only been taken down once, and that was actually my fault. In, in my 10 MMA fights, one takedown, no one gives me any credit for that. That's fine, though. I don't need it. The last fight was Stefan Struve. The dude strung together four submissions in a row, and I avoided three. What, a standing darts, a guillotine, a guillotine? I just happened to get caught by a triangle. I'm sorry. Don't forget the power bomb thrown in there, too. It's not like he didn't try to get no, out of bro, it. I can't believe that dude said afterwards he gave me some tips. If yeah, you would have just yeah. put your leg over my stomach, you would have got out. I was like, if you would have just let me go, that would have been easier. Like, if you would have just went unconscious when I tried to slam you in your neck, I hate you. I love you. Come here. <laughs> 
and with Christian Warcraft, man, he's he seems like he's a fan of yours. Seems like once again you got another guy, Stefan Stroop, kind of a fun fight. I mean, no, you're not a guy who gets in the whole bad blood stuff, anyways. But fun fight. Do you, do you enjoy that when a guy's you know Christian's having fun with it, like, ready yeah, yeah. for a fun fight? Yes, man, absolutely. Hey, hey, uh, tip. I'll, I'll give everybody my game plan all the time. My game plan all the time is to punch and kick you. Don't worry about me shooting in on you and submitting you. Don't have to worry about that. My, my game plan is to punch and kick you. That's not a secret. I don't hate anybody. I've never given anybody a reason to dislike me. So all these guys will walk around. I know it's like pre-fight. I'm going to kick your ass. Rah. Like, they feel that way and they say that because that's what they need to do. But deep down inside, they don't even believe themselves because, I mean, I'm not... How do you hate a stranger? You just can't. I mean, I, I haven't done it. I haven't given anybody any reason to. Christian Warcraft and actually, I wish I knew more, man. We've spoken two or three times maybe before this fight for a few seconds here. You know, and now I'm actually, I've gotten to talk to him a little bit, man. The dude's a cool guy, man. You would never get that impression from him just off his appearance, his demeanor, and especially what we do. You know, you UFC fighters, man. You guys are all monsters. And that's all you do is you just go around committing crimes and murder. <laughs> it's like this. We're just regular guys with an odd job, man. That's, that's it. That dude is a nice guy. You wouldn't get it off of looking at him. Judging the book by his cover. You look at the dude and say, ah, uh, nope. But that dude's a nice guy. You'd think he was a camp counselor if you talked to him for five minutes. Last question. I got to ask you about this. You say nice guys. Dude, what's up with Alistair Overeem taking a shot, saying he was a, he's a, you know, Pat Barry's a great striker, but he's not as good as me. Did you, did you laugh at that, or is that just, again, that pre fight stuff? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm positive he means it. <laughs> I don't think Alistair Overeem remembers that. I've actually been knowing him for years. I knew him back when he was. Alistair Overeem. You can tell us some stories, right? I, I just, I've, I've seen him before. Alistair Overeem, if you watch this, the Zebra Lounge, Pat Barry at the front door, you, we know each other. <laughs> But am I on his level of kickboxing? No. I say it. He was right. He wasn't wrong. He's been kickboxing his entire life. He's a Dutch kickboxer. He's been in the K1. He's gone further. He's earned more titles. He's had more kickboxing matches than I have. I am not on his level of striking. Okay. I'm not going to argue against that. But he needs to remember. I'm cuter. Mm. <laughs> that, see? And you got better hair. Done. Story over. Might even leave it dry. I like it. <laughs> Thank you, Pat.